Howdy. Here we have Power Coal Combiner's Leadfoot with his Minicon Pinpoint. Now, one thing I'll get out of the way, I'm, I'm not very enthused about this line, so don't expect many reviews of these. The more I look at Leadfoot, the more he looks like a cross between Beast Machine's Mirage and G1 Slapdash. The former because he's a chunky Formula 1 racer, and the latter because he's orange. And something of a power master, actually. But the car itself is reasonably well done. It's solid, and it looks good for the most part. It seems that the figures designed for the two packs are generally better than those originally designed for the five packs. Proof of that theory? Power Core Combiner's Skyburst with the Aerial Bots. A problem that occurs throughout the entire range is this. They don't even attempt to hide the pegs, they're just they're just literally sticking out like sore thumbs. Even at this scale, I'm sure they could have solved this. I mean, just look at Smolder or Stakeout. You know how I've said that this guy's a power master? Well, Pinpoint forms the engine, or the vehicle mode weapon. The engine block itself is nicely detailed. The additional exhaust pipes are nice, I suppose, and the guns give him some firepower at least. But the rest is pretty much just the limbs folded up. It doesn't even hold together very well. His robot mode, however, is something different. Now here, he just looks great. He's all beefed up and ready for action. There's a nice little bit of paint on his mean-looking face. But what I really like about Pinpointer is that even in this mode, he can still use the guns. Few minicons can do something like this. Unfortunately, while he has average articulation for a minicon, he has no heel spurs that would allow him to stand up in any sort of dynamic pose unless his legs are perfectly straight. See what I mean? But even still, this may be one of the best looking robot modes for a minicon I've ever seen. And this is the first one I've reviewed, so that's saying a lot. Talking of robot modes, let's see what this guy has to offer. Other than one glaring flaw, which I'll get to, Leadfoot's robot form also looks pretty good. Having exhaust pipes for fingers might seem silly at first, but if he could fire a smoke screen from his fingers, then that's something. Posability is decent, as you can make out here. However, these diagonal swivels meant for combine mode are much looser than his actual hip joints and are much easier to move, which can get a little annoying at times. On the other hand, two of the drone pegs act as heel spurs, giving him good standing stability. See? He may be named Lead Foot, but he has a pin head. Seriously, it's tiny compared to the rest of him. And the sculpt itself is a little weird. Between the shape of his optics and the design of his face, it's no wonder Emgo says he looks depressed. Oh, and forget about Pinpoint's gun mode. It's lame. It's the robot mode with the guns pointing up. It doesn't even hold together at all. 
Clearly something worked out after the fact. I don't have a set of drones to work with, unfortunately, but for the sake of this review, I'll show you his torso mode. And you can see, this head is actually more in proportion with the rest of him, but it's meant for combined mode, so on we go. The torso doesn't look too bad actually, and despite numerous reports of it being really unstable, mine holds together pretty well. I would suggest combining it with the Rallybot drones, except reviews of that set have been less than positive, and the Stondercons are meant for the recolor overrun. Now, Pinpoint's fourth and final mode is the chest armor, which is just the engine with the guns pointing backwards. It's okay, I suppose. It's still rather unstable on its own, but it plugs onto Leadfoot's chest very securely. Said armor also works on Leadfoot's regular robot mode, so there are some play options to be had here. Despite all the faults of this set, I like it. But it does show that Power Core Combiners is purely a gimmick based line, though not nearly as bad as the Armada range. <laughs> if you pick up any of the two packs, this isn't a bad choice. Though with the line axed for Dark of the Moon toys, it's not like there are that many to choose from anyway. Next, I'll be looking at another LEGO Technic set, but until then, till all are one.